usually start this way, but I think to explain a little bit about why I'm here, I should start at the beginning. Um, I had a car accident seven years ago, uh, which resulted in spinal cord injury, and as a result, I'm paralyzed from sort of the chest down and wheelchair bound. Um, at this time I had the accident, it was just after I left school, so obviously any plans I'd had for the future were dramatically altered. Um, and I woke up in intensive care about three months later and announced that instead of walking into law school, I was gonna be now rolling into art school. So a bit of a change, but it was um, one that I was really excited about. So I went off to art school, and about a year later, um, the BBC contacted me, because they, they were looking for some young, um, and I think probably a little bit crazy, disabled people, of which I was one, and I uh, was invited to go along on a trip through the uh, uh, jungle, through Nicaragua, across Nicaragua, actually. Um, it was the first one they'd ever done, a very, very groundbreaking project and TV show, um, and very, very inspiring. Um, and I went on this and came home. And um, as a result of that show, um, lots of other productions have started to be made about disability and about how, uh, really trying to show that disabled people aren't just, you know, sad, lonely, miserable people. They actually have lives and they're quite interesting people. So they made another show and this time um, I was invited to come along on a show, very, very different, but it was about modeling. Um, it, was a, it, it was based on the formats that you see a lot with um, disabled, it's called, um, America's Next Top Model, you see them on television, they're a group of girls all go in for a competition and one of them wins a contract uh, to, to model at the end of it. Anyway, so this one was very similar, but it took disabled women in Britain and um, I was invited to go along on this and it was very, very, very different, very exciting, very controversial as you can imagine. Um, and I got all the way through, um, I didn't win, I came second, um, but nevertheless I came out um, and very excited to see what would happen for the girl that won, who was a girl who'd been born without her forearm, so um, quite a visual disability, obviously. Anyway, nothing did happen, and all the doors that we thought the show may have opened into the industry um, for a disabled model were still closed. So this was quite frustrating. Anyway, I started um, doing some of my own things. I started setting up fashion shows and using disabled models and kind of showcasing what, what disabled young women are still capable of doing. Um, and around this time, there was a young girl named Riam Dean who um, was born again without her forearm and she was working in Abercrombie & Fitch, the American clothing company in London. And she was working in the shops and she used to wear a cardigan to cover her prosthetic arm. And it was summer, she took it off and she was fired basically for showing her her arm. And it was a huge story, obviously a very rid ridiculous, um, awful case of discrimination. And I was using Riam, funnily enough, as one of my models in one of these shows, and I said to her, look, let's use this as a platform to do something exciting. Let's turn this story of sadness into one of inspiration, because you obviously are an, inspiration, an inspirational girl. She fought for her rights, she sued Abercrombie. Anyway, so we started a campaign called Imperfect, and Imperfect um, is a play on the word, you know, obviously, what is perfection? I'm perfect, you know, we're all perfect in our own different ways. So the idea of the campaign was to bring together young disabled people and really inspire and motivate and empower them, but also to draw attention to those that were already doing very inspirational things at the same time, you know, already out there being just incredible people anyway. So the campaign really took off and there were an enormous amount of supporters that wanted to get involved, disabled or not, they just want, they like the cause, they like the fact that actually there are young disabled people out there and they're just normal people and it's not something that should be, you know, hidden or ostracized. This is actually Riam, the girl that was fired from Abercrombie. So the, the, the campaign was really, really exciting and it took off in a big way and we all had a very, uh, an amazing time and we started a clothing label and um, we wanted to sort of bridge the boundary between what was a disabled um, clothing company and what was actually just all inclusive. It was all about everyone, it wasn't about categorizing in any way. Anyway, we lost funding because the recession hit and the investors couldn't fund it anymore, so we had to sort of put that on the back shelf, which is still the case, but anyway, there are still some exciting people out there doing some incredible things. This woman here is a woman I work with, um, Izzy Camilleri, who's a Canadian designer, um, and she started creating clothing that was specifically to cater for people who are sat down. It's obviously not something that most of you would have to think about, but, and actually, something that I'd never really thought about, but we have to change how we wear our clothes. It's very simple, very, very small thing, but she started this very exciting movement of making people start to think that actually I have a talent to design clothing. Why don't I use that to help people that need it? So anyway, me and Izzy are working to promote this label and it's been really exciting. We've taken it around the States and 
um, it's really gaining pace as well. But the thing that I'm doing now myself, actually, is something that I've recently designed called a manequal. Um, it's a kind of portmanteau of the words mannequin and equal, and it's about equality. What I'm trying to do is um, I've designed this chair, which is a wheelchair for a mannequin. Um, the idea is, is that it sits in, a in an in-store window or in, a, in the display, and a mannequin sits in it, so it's sort of bringing in this whole entire demographic of disabled shoppers into the forefront. We shouldn't be ostracized. We do shop in shops. We do wear clothes. We should be in there too. So I designed this chair, um, and it comes in a range of different colors. It's meant to act as an extension of the, the, the mannequin that it is seated. So if the mannequin's wearing predominantly black clothing, for example, it could be black or it can be polka dot. It can be anything it needs to be to fit aesthetically and subtly into the, the display that it's within. And really hope to kind of give people a sense, not just the wheelchair users, but the entire disabled community that are actually sort of, um, we're all symbolized by that symbol of the wheelchair. And, um, and to, make, to make them feel welcome, to make them not feel that they don't belong there, that, it, that these shops cater for them. So this is, um, I work with a, some London-based shoe designer. Um, we, are, uh, we were messing around with trying to, to kind of show how my chair would work and how her shoes work, and just how the whole concept would work. And it was really, really, it's been very, very exciting. Um, and it has recently been launched in Debenhams in the UK. It's on the high street now. That's it, closer up. Um, and it's... Oh. <laughs> um, basically, um, it is a very exciting first step. And I think, I, I think one of the things that I... I find is that my accident was not the worst thing that happened to me in many ways, it was the very best thing that happened to me. It has taken me around the world, it has brought me here to India, it has you know, brought into my life new people, exciting people, and it has given me the ability to live a much more um, happy and content life as a result of redefining my perspective and, and my priorities. But I do think that it comes with a responsibility, and the responsibility that I find is that I have to react to the world around me that I've now come into, this, this parallel universe of disability, and to try and change things that need to be changed. And sitting here over the last few days and seeing some of the people speak, and I think I found it's very reassuring to know that a lot of the, you guys out there have started very small and have, as a result, then moved on to something very, very much bigger, and it's all about starting somewhere. And it's encouraging to know that even though I'm doing something very small just now, hopefully it might turn into something big in the future. So thank you for having me. Thank you.